Good afternoon, everyone. I'm David Carter. I'm an assistant professor of music here at LMU, and I'm excited you're all here today. So this concert is being also broadcast on KXLU, so I'll be introducing each piece as we go, especially for our radio audience, and, and it's also being um, live streamed on YouTube. So I would ask everyone to please um, turn off any cell phone ringers, um, just to make sure that we can uh, keep things quiet during the performances. But just as a little bit of background about this festival, so um, when I started at LMU last, last year, we started this festival um, as a chance to help grow our composition program and um, also to help give the kind of experience that I had as a young composer and developing composer to other young composers, because I, I found these kind of festival events really helpful and fun. Um, and so wanted to pass on that experience to uh, a new generation of composers. So the way this festival worked was we um, had a call for scores and call for music in which we had um, applicants submit a piece that they would like performed at this concert. And uh, we received lots of entries and then we ultimately selected eight um, compositions to be performed at this concert. And so those eight composers have, have joined us here for, this, for the festival. Um, six of them are here in person, two are um, located um, on the other side of the country, far distance, and um, are attending virtually. But uh, we have the other six with us here today. So one thing I would just ask uh, those of you here in the live audience, um, be thinking about any questions that you might have for any of the student composers. Uh, because um, prior to our last piece, our last piece has a little bit of a setup. So prior to that last piece, um, we'll take a few minutes. I'll call up the composers to the stage, and they will take any questions um, audience members have, and we'll use that as an opportunity to do a little bit of Q&A. So be thinking about that. All right, so um, uh, let's go ahead and turn to our first piece. So um, also, I, let me just say a few thank yous to people who have, who have been really important in helping make this event happen. So uh, Josh Thompson here, um, work study student, uh, Monse Torres, um, Eric Escalante, and Nestor Pereira, who uh, work here at Murphy Hall. Uh, TJ Harper, the chair of our department. Uh, Tashi Cardinale and Kate Shirley, who also helped really put the, the uh, festival together. So I wanted to thank all these people, and then certainly all of our performers and uh, then the composers who created these works. So uh, let's turn to the first piece. So the first piece um, will be performed by violinist Ken Iso, and he will be performing with uh, an electronic backing track. This piece was composed by Madeline Klarichek, and it's called Ipsaity, and it's for uh, violin and fixed media. And um, I look forward to hearing all the pieces. So now I'm on the leash. <laughs> Thank you. 
So you just heard John Lind's Sonatina for a Violin and Piano in D Major. And our next piece is written by Ethan Fisher Shave. So uh, for our next piece, we've, we've had to make um, a slight alteration in the program for this one. Um, the performer who's supposed to uh, perform it on saxophone, Chica Nue, uh, had a personal emergency. And so is going to be unable to be here today. So we wish her well, but Oliver, could you come up for a minute? So uh, just maybe so you could just say a word about the recording that we're gonna be hearing and um, the performer. 
It's still an outstanding piece and it's for saxophone and electronics. And so I thought maybe Oliver could just share a word in terms of about um, the recording made and the process of uh, you know, adding the electronics. Hi, so I'm Oliver, as you said, and um, this piece is called Industrial Automation. And my process for kind of writing it is I was really interested in writing like a contemporary kind of style piece for the saxophone and um, to also incorporate my interest for uh, music production and uh, decided to combine those two things and make a piece for saxophone with incorporation of electronic sounds that are all developed from the saxophone. Um, the performance you're gonna hear is by um, a saxophonist named Russell Peterson. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you, Oliver. So we will go ahead and hear that now. Thank you. 
Thank you, Oliver. I'm David Carter, and you're listening and watching the New Music on the Bluff Festival concert um, being broadcast live from Loyola Marymount University in Murphy Recital Hall. Our next piece is a special treat because the composer is also the performer. So Carl Verdanian is a student of Armenian descent at Glendale Community College, majoring in music and specializing in classical guitar performance. And he's, uh, in addition to being a composer, he's also an outstanding classical guitarist. And so we're going to be hearing his piece next called Mezzo Walsa. So our next piece will be performed by LMU uh, faculty vocal instructor, um, Marisa De Silva. Uh, Marisa is an important part of our um, vocal faculty here at LMU. And she will be performing a piece by Avery Britt, who is in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, in school there. And that's 
actually my hometown. So I'm excited to have someone from Georgia here on the concert. And uh, her piece is called Books in Bronze, and it's for solo soprano. So um, let's welcome Marisa De Silva. Our next composition is entitled Sepia and uh, by Stephen Lee, uh, who lives in Orinda, California. And Stephen is a high school sophomore at Miramonte High School in Orinda. And this piece will be performed by Wojciech Kosher, who is on the piano faculty here at LMU, and he's an important part of our instructional faculty. And uh, he also teaches oral skills here and works with the opera program. So next up, we'll have uh, Wojciech Kosyan.
So we're coming to our final piece, and this piece does require a little bit of setup with the percussion. So I want to take a few minutes while um, that is happening to actually ask all six of our in-person composers who are here today to uh, come up to stage and uh, just be acknowledged and answer any questions audience members may have for them. So I'll go ahead and ask them to go ahead and come on up. Our final piece is by Spencer Cha, who lives in San Jose, California, and the piece is going to be called Decrypted.
And we'll come to that momentarily. And we'll stay out of the way of the uh, flying percussion instrument. All right, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Oh, uh, I think, yeah, one of them had to leave early. Oh, Carl. Let's get Carl out here. Yeah. Can you, uh, okay. So let me just, uh, I'll give you each of you a chance just to um, say your name and um, where you're in school. And then we'll see if we have any audience questions. Hi, uh, my name is Ben Jock, and I'm at the Harvard School in Tennessee. Hi, my name is Helen Perry, and I'm currently at Mountain View High School. Uh, hello, Stephen Lee, I'm at the Harvard School in Tennessee. We have one in school. I'm Oliver. I'm from Los Angeles, and I go to Crossroads High School. Carlin from Landon Plain College. Thank you all. And so let me just ask the audience a question. I think we have a question here. Yes. Oh, no. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Any, anyone curious about anything? Um, the question could either be for all of the composers, you know, for any of them, or for a specific composer, just anything you want to ask about their process or their ex uh, experience writing the piece or working with the performers. Yeah, go ahead. For, for any performers, in a few words, what would you say is the work of music for us to what's, what's the energy? Hard question. Um, passion and grace. Anything else want to answer? Yeah, look it up. Look it up. I'd say um, the human experience. Um, I suppose for me, I just I think that when, when, when anybody would write music, it's going to be naturally come from it. Their experiences and their inspiration, which depends of course on what they were born, how they were growing up, and things like that. So I just read what I want to do. I'm going to go with uh, imagination. Um, words, uh, impressions, and expression. All right, if I just ask you to come down here in front of the camera just so our, our viewers at home can, can see you. And uh, so I think I did see another hand up back here. Yes. Um, so uh, once you have an idea for a song, when you start to do the passing process, what's the first thing you think? Let me start with Carl first this time. Suppose uh, in my local house now from the experience to me. Um, um, a lot of things that I write are improvisatory, I would say. So uh, that's the first thing, you know, uh, that goes on the paper. For me, I think if I come up with an idea that I want to develop, I'll try to take that one idea and develop it almost in as many ways as I can, try to put it like inverted, try to put it in a different key, try to play around with the rhythms and really try to take it as far as I possibly can and then Kind of go from there. Something I really want to work on um, in my music is to have kind of more patience with what I'm writing and to further develop um, a lot of my like initial ideas. That I think. Um, so whenever I have an idea, usually that means a piece of music, a measure or roughly in a, in a single line. I try to add something on top of that and any voice to try to accompany it. And once you have that idea, then you can change it and edit it and write things that accompany it um, as as before that and in front of that. And then if you did enough time, so much come up with things. For me, I follow my ear a lot of the time. Um, everything I write, I don't write it down unless I hear it first. So it's kind of like following that one thread that you pull to unravel the whole sweater to create this lovely piece. Um, I think also a big part of it, after I get that first initial idea, the first initial brainstorming, um, there comes the research phase, 
which takes probably the longest. Um, it's looking at all the different types of music that I'm interested in that is for the specific instrumentation or that um, covers this specific topic or um, concept that I'm trying to explore. I'd say since I'm a pianist, um, when the idea comes to me, it either goes to the piano or straight to the paper. I think that it's really important to write all of the ideas, all the ideas that you get down, because for us composers, it's really, really important for us to just keep creating and creating, even if some of the ideas are trash, even if you cut like all of them, or I'm sorry, if you cut like almost all of them, you're bound to have one idea in a week or in a month that's going to evolve into something super great. So it's just making sure you get everything down, everything in your mind. Great, and just to follow up for Maddie, you, you said that you like to be able to hear first before you write. So do you mean um, to actually hear it with your ears or do you mean more internally hear it in your mind? It's, um, it's a bit of both, I'd say. I definitely like hear the melody in my mind. Um, and like Spencer said, just get everything down. Don't lose anything. You don't know what could come out of it. So I have um, an embarrassing number of voice memos um, and they're all like titled complete nonsense. And um, I'm definitely not a vocalist myself, but whenever I do have these sort of melodic ideas um, or rhythmic ideas or anything, I try my best to capture it um, through my phone recording. So just want to preserve everything. Just for any aspiring composers out there, just get everything down like Spencer said. I highly second the voice memos. Voice memos are great. Totally use them. The voice memos library is very, very useful. Yeah, I agree myself. I make a lot of voice memos on my phone as well. So, <laughs> uh, other questions? Well, another one I have would, would just be I would be interested to know what the process of working with performers is like for you, maybe especially for this particular piece in terms of working with the performer and um, what kind of interaction has gone on between you and the performers that, that we've had today. And I know in Carl's case, the performers himself, but, but with the others, you, you've worked with uh, other performers. Uh, I think the most important thing is just making sure that we're on the same page. So for whatever I've written, just making sure that the notation, the ideas that I'm trying to get across have been are getting across through what I've written um, to what they're playing. So just making sure that I'm able to hear what's coming out and that it sounds, I mean, not exactly like I want it, but properly, is I think the most important part about working with performers. The thing I love about it the most is that it's such a collaborative process. Sometimes they um, bring up new ideas or play things in a certain way that make you go, oh, that's better than what I originally wrote down and you want to change it. So it's, um, again, it's very collaborative. I've gotten the honor to work with um, Ken Isla before. Um, he actually premiered the same piece that he just played. So um, he's already incredible and I already completely trusted him with this piece. But I remember when we first worked on it, he had um, some ideas for how I could make it even better and some ways that he could play it or um, different strengths that he could bring as a fantastic violinist. So it's really that whole relationship that you have with them. Just um, it's it's a really wonderful working relationship, and um, it's probably one of my favorite parts about um, music composition. Um, yeah, the sort of give and take with um, sort of uh, reviewing a piece is definitely probably the most important part to me, um, right? Unless you want to just compose like one instrument the rest of your life, then you're going to be working with things you aren't quite sure about or things which um, other people who just do the stuff like professionally will know more about than you. And I think that's very important to take into account and what they think about everything. Um, yeah, I guess there's kind of peer review thing and position. Yeah, I'd say like one of my most, one of my favorite parts of music is the collaboration element and working with others. And I think once you have an artist um, who's willing to put time into like performing your piece and learning it, um, I think that like you develop a certain trust with that artist and um, it's a really kind of good feeling to have. And um, yeah, I think as uh, Spencer said, just like staying on the same page with the artist and um, making sure you guys agree on stuff and if there's any disagreements and anything kind of resolving those and um, yeah. Um, so far I've had an honor to uh, work with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oftentimes, uh, you 
know, proposing for yourself can be quite challenging as well because uh, there is a myriad of uh, possibilities and you end up not choosing just one right way, right? You're just balancing off different uh, ways to notate certain things or articulate. Great, and I think we have our percussion set up ready. So I just want to ask everyone to give a hand to all of the perform I mean, all the composers and the performers here today uh, for doing an outstanding job. And, and I also want to make sure we don't forget the two composers who are not with us today, but attending virtually. So Avery Brett uh, in Georgia and uh, Ethan. Ethan Fisher shaped in Massachusetts. So they've also done a great job with their pieces. All right, so our final piece today is by Spencer here, and it's called Decrypted, and it uh, will be performed by Aaron Smith on percussion and Wojciech Kosian on piano.
So that concludes our concert for the New Music on the Bluff Festival. So uh, thank you again to all the performers and composers. And we'll be signing off on KXLU. <laughs>